To all of our loyal viewers, you already know where I stand on nuclear power. I am a firm believer in Lifter and all it can do, but I still get asked, are there other and possibly better approaches to going the MSR route? The short answer is yes, and I'm going to go over that today. I'm Sean Kenny, and this is Rock Logic. <laughs> And welcome to Rock Logic. I am your host, Sean Kenny. And before we get started, I just wanted to give a big shout out and thank you to all of our viewers and subscribers who have been actively watching this podcast. To be honest with you, my producer and I, when we started recording this series, I uh, wasn't sure what to expect. Uh, to my delightful surprise, we've been getting a tremendous amount of positive feedback. Uh, we've also been receiving some very engaging comments from people who have been a long-term fans of the Molten Salt Reactor technology. It is because of this level of engagement that I was inspired to do our next topic on alternatives to lifters as well as the solution to our nuclear waste issues in this country. Now, for those of you who are tuning in and probably asking yourselves, Sean, have you changed your mind about lifter and thorium as the fuel of the future? No, I'm still a firm believer in thorium molten salt reactors like Lifter are the best way forward long term to achieving a clean energy future. That being said, and something which is brought up by many, is there are challenges to implementing the thorium fuel cycle. For starters, there are supply chain issues in regards to Lifter. FLYB, which acts as the fuel solvent, requires highly enriched lithium, which is not actively produced or sold. Uranium-233, which is needed to start the fission process, um, is an extremely short supply and has been under the threat of disposal from our national labs. In an ideal circumstance, you'd want to make use of Brayton cycle gas turbines using supercritical CO2 for both power conversion and tritium extraction. However, these have not been tested or actively used as of yet. To make matters worse, uh, the current regulatory environment in the U.S. favors uranium over thorium. Now, these are not insurmountable challenges, nor are they beyond our comprehension. The supply chain and technological issues involving Lifter uh, can be solved with good engineering, proper funding, and some changes to U.S. nuclear policy. However, I must stress, unlike other nuclear startups, only one plans on going towards this objective, and that's Flybe Energy in Huntsville, Alabama. The other companies going the MSR route are either not using thorium, not building a breeder, or just using off-the-shelf technology to get to market as quickly as possible. Even I have to admit that Kirk Sorensen chose the hardest path when he decided to go this route. And while I admire him for uh, doing this, I have to acknowledge that there are solid alternatives to this approach. And in these alternatives, there is an opportunity to properly address the elephant in the room that is the nuclear waste issue. The U.S. has over 70,000 metric tons of spent nuclear fuel generated by light water reactors in this country. It is expected that this amount will increase to 153,000 tons by 2055 with no clear disposal option. Since the 1980s, with the passing of the Nuclear Waste Policy Act, the plan was to build a large waste repository in Yucca Mountain, Nevada. Uh, the costs associated with disposing and handling of spent nuclear fuel would be paid by the Department of Energy's Nuclear Waste Fund, which would collect fees from utilities uh, to cover the costs. However, the plan was shot down during the Obama administration due to environmental concerns. Since then, the Department of Energy has collected over $43.4 billion and has been accruing over $1.5 billion in interest every year. By law, the DOE is required to use these funds uh, to dispose of spent nuclear fuel and other forms of nuclear waste. The appropriate solution might be to directly fund and allow the development of reactors that make use of spent nuclear fuel to create electricity. You see, spent nuclear fuel isn't exactly waste. And if you watched episode two of this podcast, uh, you probably remember that light water reactors only use less than 1% of the fuel in the reactor before it becomes unusable. Afterwards, it gets placed in dry cast storage. Uh, however, this doesn't mean that it can't be reprocessed for future use. For decades, the French government and Areva have been doing this to manage their waste stockpiles and to reduce the need to import more uranium. This is costly and it can only be done once or twice before it gets stashed away again. However, there are molten salt reactor designs that make direct use of the whole stock to generate power. 
In 2015, Ed Field and Carl Perez founded Elysium Industries, a company looking to build molten chloride fast reactors. These are molten salt reactors that use fast spectrum neutrons to achieve fission as opposed to thermal neutrons that most molten salt reactors have been designed for. Doing so allows the reactor to have several advantages over competing technologies. For starters, the reactor is designed to be fuel flexible. Uh, it can use anything from thorium, uranium, weapons grade plutonium, or even spent nuclear fuel. Right now, the focus is to use spent nuclear fuel and waste plutonium because fast neutron reactors traditionally do a better job burning up the actinides and using up all the fuel while reducing the radiotoxicity of the nuclear waste products. So they got that going for them, which is nice. So I got that going for me, which is nice. Uh, the reactor also doesn't need a graphite moderator in its core to slow down neutrons, which helps with reducing the cost and the complexity of the reactor, as well as the maintenance concerns with having to replace the core every few years or so. Instead, they just have a pot of chloride salts burning up the waste as fuel. The reactor also deals with uh, modular construction in an ingenious way. Most companies design small reactors with uh, different power outputs. If your power needs change, the solution is to buy more reactors over time. With Elysium's design, you don't need to do this. Uh, you can start small and just add more heat exchangers and pumps over time to increase the power output without changing the overall footprint of the plant. This also comes in handy with site licensing as you don't need to get another license for new reactors. Just increase the power output of the old one instead. Molten chloride fast reactors also don't have the same supply chain constraints as with the lifter. No flyb is needed, no new technology is required, and you don't need uranium-233 to get things started. The salts used are less corrosive, and you can make use of traditional steam turbines for power conversion. Best of all, it's a breeder reactor, so down the road, this thing can possibly produce other fission products, and if they opt to use the thorium blanket, they might be able to produce uh, uranium-233 to fuel the next wave of thorium molten salt reactors. In conclusion, I feel that the Department of Energy should make better use of this fund to directly support companies that mean to use spent nuclear fuel in this way. I also feel that if you're going to pick a worthy alternative to thorium and the lifter, that one should look no further than the molten chloride fast reactor. The fuel needed is already there and no new mining is required. Uh, the stockpiles of SNF can power our civilization for at least three centuries before it's depleted. It's not a bad way to go. However, I am still a firm believer that thorium is the best way forward long term to keep human civilization going for thousands of years. I haven't had the opportunity to discuss other reactor variants, and in the future I plan on going into a discussion about Flybe Energy's Lifter 49, which is an alternative variant that can make use of waste products for fuel consumption. However, that will have to be a topic for a different time. And if you have any other topics you'd like me to look into, let us know. Comment on YouTube, send us a tweet, or message us on Facebook. We want to know what topics you're interested in. I'm your host, Sean Kenny, and this is Rock Logic. Hey, thank you so much for uh, watching today's episode. Uh, we're a new podcast, so we really appreciate if you like this video and subscribe to it. My producer, Jessica, says that I'll get a cookie uh, for every new subscriber we get. Maybe if I'm good enough, she'll let me outside. Is that good? Yeah, all right. Hmm. That's good. That's a good cooking.